Hello and welcome back to another episode on learning how to program computers with C++. You're still with me, Muhindo Mbarak, as your tutor. And today we are going to start from where we stopped at. And uh, we're going to look at arrays. That's where we stopped at. Uh, previously, we stopped at functions. We'll look at the continue and the break uh, features of uh, C++ uh loops so today we're going to look at what at functions i mean at at arrays so what are c plus plus arrays so these are just a definition of c plus plus array and uh, we say array is a variable that can store multiple variables or is a variable that can store many variables okay so you remember we have a problem let me first open my code editor this is my sublime i mean my code blocks and uh, I'm going to begin by showing you what the problem that we had before. Assume that we have um, assume that we have um, a class that we teach, and we want to store the marks of students. So it means that to store the marks of students, we shall need variables. Uh, so since if we have like five students, I can simply create for them, for example, int mark one. And this will store the mark for the student one, and they put there his mark maybe uh, forty. I mean forty nine. Then I'll duplicate this one and name this one int mark two, and then I put maybe uh, fifty. And then I duplicate this one, this int mark three, and maybe I put what uh, uh, forty forty. And then int mark four. This is for the mark of student four for the fourth student and then i put here maybe uh 36 and then lastly if i have the fifth student i'll say int mark what int mark five and then i put here uh maybe uh 16. so those are the marks for the six 16 students so if you want to print the marks of these team students first of all you see we have declared six separate different variables and uh, in case we want to manipulate them for example displaying them on the screen then we have to display them into six different what functions so i can even say c out and then i say put out and then i say um mark one mark one and then i can add for example a new line and l okay and l uh, so if I do like that, then I expect what? I expect uh, a yeah, supposed to be okay. I expect the first, the first mark. So let me put the second mark. Let me put the what? The third mark. Mm, the third mark, and let me put the what? The fourth mark. So you see how we are repeating ourselves. Something that we could uh, do simply, but uh, we repeat ourselves. So you see, I'll have done what? I'll have presented the marks of these. Uh, different five student using uh, five different lines for initializing them and again come and use the other five different lines for displaying these students so it's, it's a problem there is no any other way we can either create a loop and display these marks now assume that we're having um, 1000 students oh okay 100 students so what does it mean then it mean that we shall have to do what we shall have to create these students uh i mean you shall have to print them a hundred different lines in order to display the marks of a hundred different students that's a problem so to solve this it's better we find a way that uh, we can store them in a well organized way so that if we want to do something which is repetitive like this one we can uh, have a logic and we do it using a simply a simple line for example using a loop or any other way that can do it simpler than this which is uh, needs us to do what to repeat ourselves so to do that uh, we came up with uh, arrays so array it will allow us to store data which is organized in a uh, which is related and organ uh, which is related in a what in a single variable in a single variable so that we can access them into that single variable that's the meaning of array it's just uh, we store different values 
into a single variable then we can use the indices or the index to access those values so to create an array you just simply declare the array type so those data that data must be related they must be related and they must be of same data type you cannot mix the array of uh, characters and then you mix it with what with integers in c++ it is either characters or integers or any other uh, data type of array so for example if you want to create an array of integers since these are marks of what of uh, students and uh, we can see you're having only integers so what we can do we can uh, create an array and store them in the in an array and this is how we can manipulate them in a simpler way compared to repeating ourselves uh, now what i'm going to do i am going to declare what an array and store their uh, values of a what of a mark of, of marks of these students so to declare the array so I'll just comment this one by just putting <laughs> forward slash star and then i come and put star and forward slash to do what to close the to close the array i mean to close these marks to comment them so after commenting them i'm going to close the what i'm going to create an array so to create an array i'll simply say integer so it means that i'm going to create the array that will store integer values then i give the name of this integer i mean the name of this array i can call it mark or i can call it max okay so after putting the max then i'll have to specify the size i'll have to specify the size of this array the maximum size so i can say this array will store the max of five students so after specifying the marks of five students then i can store there the marks directly so to store the marks in this array i'll simply just put like this equal sign and then open the curl bracket and start putting the marks so i put for example we had uh, 49 then to separate and put another value i put a comma and then after 49 we had uh, 50 and then we had uh, 40 then we had 36 and then we had 16 and then you put a semicolon so that those are our marks so you can see all these values have been stored in a single variable but this single variable is not like our simple variables that we are using here these variables are all inclined inside a what uh, a list of uh, different variables and you can see here we have what we have five <coughs> now if you want to access a value here it means that i'll have to specify which value i want to print because there are many values inside there for example we want to access this first value so to print this one or to display it i'll just simply say see out and then i put out <coughs> then i put max okay then after putting max i'll have to do what to specify so i can specify by putting the square bracket otherwise let me first put a semicolon like this and try to print so if i try to i mean i try to run the program you can see it has printed chinese it has printed something that we don't understand why because we did not put the exact value that we want to do what we want to access so if we want to put the exact value that we want to access we have to specify it here because there are many values so if i want to access this pos value in position zero i'll put this i'll simply put here the index we we'll call it index zero so if i put zero it means that it's going to run and display for us uh 49 i hope you understand so it means that the array indices they begin from zero so this one will be in the index zero this one will be in the index uh 50 this one will be in the index 40 this one will be in the index what 36 and this one will be in the uh, sorry 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 this one will be in the index zero this one one this one two this one three this one four so it will never reach the exact uh, maximum value because it will always begin from zero and uh, our normal counting of human we normally begin from one so if we be, if we have if we put five it means that here the maximum index will be four okay so if i duplicate this and i put for example the value okay let me just remove this and i put the value in position four it means that we shall get this one in the last position which is uh 16 as you can see 
now if i come and change this one i put it in uh, five so we should get something that we did not expect why because it is out of what it is out of the indices indices okay it's out of index so if we can map this one beginning from zero up to maximum minus one so that's how we do it that's how we create arrays in c++ now if you come back to our syllabus uh that's a diff simple definition of what of array so this array can be of different data types they can be of strings they can be of integers they can be of characters they can be of any other data type for example if i want to create an array of strings i will simply uh this is uh, okay i'll leave this one as what as a file of uh, array of uh, characters so let me create another file i uh, you know I'll attach these files to the what to 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 the video so that you can download them and practice them through with so i'm going to create another array of strings so i'll simply put here new file new and then i come to servers and then i file servers oh, c plus plus okay so here i'll come to uh number three and then i'll put here array or i can say arrays then i put space then i put what strings or string array okay so after doing that so here to create an array of string let me first remove this to create an array of strings you simply put strings so that's another data type and after putting string then you specify the name of what of string for example i can say names or name names and then you specify how many names i want to do what i want to store here for example if i want to store like uh, uh five names i put like this and then i can say these five names is equal to and then i begin by open curl bracket and uh, maybe you can put hardy and then i put comma so you see here i put uh double quotes because it is considered as a what as a string okay so it means that in the index zero we shall have hardy okay let me make them uh, th uh four okay so in the zero we shall have hardy and then here i can maybe put uh some here i can put uh maybe alima and i can put um uh three okay so it means that this one will go in index zero this one will go in index one this one will go in index two and this one will go in index what in index three now let us try to uh display one of these one so if i want to display i can simply say uh a printf oh no 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 that's the program <laughs> okay see out and then i put out and then i put names and i specify the what the index so if i want to print the first one i'll just put zero and then i'll simply print that what that index position zero so that's how we do what we manipulate and uh, i mean how we create array and how we store in the arrays so it means that this array will save us not to repeat ourselves and we shall have all the data in a single variable so that we can just use this uh, index to manipulate them now if you come back uh you can follow along w3 schools and check out uh c plus plus notes and read uh, so we come uh array and loops let us loop uh, let's see how we can uh, simply uh, display this array at once assume that this array is having 1000 characters or it's having 1000 what uh values and we want to do what to display them so instead of uh you or instead of you uh printing them manually we can use the what the loops to manipulate these arrays so let me create another file and uh, save it as array loops so i'll come here and change it you can download this file in the link that i'll put in the description so here i can put array what array loops so here i will come and uh, i'll leave the same array now we're going to do what to the loop to display these arrays i mean the value in the array so first of all you need a counter i can call it okay let me just write a loop so for loop in the first i'll put the int and then declare maybe i 
or we can say counter okay then after declaring that counter then i'll put a comma and then uh, i put counter uh is less than the size of our array and the size of our array is what is four so i put here four and then i put comma and then i put counter plus plus because it's going to do what to increase so i'll come and open here the cow bracket and then i come and put here my um, c out okay let me write afresh so here between the the function i'll simply put c out and then i put out uh the names and then i specify the what the counter i mean they specify the index but remember this counter is going to begin from zero int okay it's going to begin from zero because i initialized zero and it is going to change every loop until it reaches three or until it reaches four and then it will stop so it means that instead we shall we can use that counter and put it here so that it will be populating the what the index so it will be changing zero one two because it's going to do what it's going to change here and then i can put here for example new line okay and then uh, you'll see this counter will be changing will be changing as it is doing what as it is displaying the value on the screen so if you run it uh, for int counter is equals zero, counter is less than this, counter plus plus. What's the problem again? Oh, it has to be semicolon, not a comma. Sorry, semicolon, not comma, semicolon, not comma. So if I run it, then you can see all our names have been printed in a right way. So let me do it in a uh, beginning from the highest. For example, I can begin the counter is equal to three, that will be the maximum. And then I say the counter is greater than what? Is greater than uh, um, greater than or equal to zero. So it will stop at zero exactly. And then I say counter. So instead of going on top, I'll have to reduce minus minus so that it should come backwards. So it's going to begin from the highest name to the uh, name with the smallest index. So you see. It had began with a name in the high in the end, highest index and it has ended with a name in the what in the smallest index and what made that possible is this counter so it means that if we're having even 1000 uh values toward an array we can simply manipulate them or display them using a what a loop something that was not possible when we declared uh values separately i hope you've understood that if you don't understand, you're free to do what? To put your problem in the comment section and I'll be ready to do what? To respond to it. Uh -huh. So we come to what? To array size. So it means that the array size, since we are beginning from what? From uh, zero as a normal counting, then it means that the array size will always be the maximum size minus one. So instead of putting here four, the maximum size will be three. So instead of looping and reach the three, the four, you have to loop and reach the, and don't go beyond what the four. If your array is what is having the values of, uh, or is is its maximum is what is at four. I hope you get the point. I go. I hope you get the what you get the point. Uh, so if I print in reverse, you see like the way we talked about, we have to begin from what from the value which is less than the by one less than the what the the, the array size it the array size that we declared and uh, we make sure that it reaches zero in case you want to print all the what all the values so here you can do your logic for example you want to print the odd values and you can do your logic and put your if conditions uh to do what to stop this array something like that so that's a brief information about array array is a what is a variable that stores multiple values and we can use indices to manipulate or to loop through this what loop these arrays we can use a counter to loop through the what the array and we can use the index to specify the value that we get to that we get from what from that particular array that we created before okay so array is just a value or a variable that stores that multiple values so that's uh, about arrays so I come to functions pointers right now they're not used in simpler we don't no longer use them so much so we come to what 
to functions in C++. So a function is just a piece of code that you write and then you want to do what? To reuse it again. It's a piece of code that you write one time and reuse it multiple times. That's a simple definition of a function. A function is a block of code which only runs when it is called and you can you have to use it only when you call it and you can use it multiple times as many as you want aha we can pass data to these functions and then ah. so let us uh, look at functions but in simple terms a function is a piece of code that we shall execute only when we want it to be executed Aha, uh -huh. so let us create a what? Let us uh, create a, a, a file of function. So I'm going to come here to file and say new. I'll save as. Uh, so file, uh, save as. Okay, so this one is four. I'm going to do what? Change this one to five. And I'll call this one functions. Uh, functions, and then I'll call it intro action okay so i'll delete all what i had before okay so just like they always said a c plus plus program will always begin from the main function so you see this is our main function that's what we meant so how how do you create a, a a function how do you create a function so to create a function you first you first declare what this function will return after creating a function after declaring what it will return then you define its name after defining its name then you put the normal brackets like this one and then you put the curl brackets and write the function that uh, or the code between these curl those curl brackets for example this is the main function this is what is returning you see we are returning integer which is zero and here we say that we will return a what? A zero. So to create a function, you begin by writing what you will do what? What will return. Then you give it a name. So by default, our main function is the one that will always need in what? In a C++ program. So that the program should know where it should start from. So here, it knows it will start from what? From the main function. So this, the name of this function is called main. And then have this bracket that will take arguments. This normal bracket. And then you open curl bracket and you write whatever you want between this main function. So it means that this code will be executed only when this main function will be called. And this main function will be called automatically by the operating system. So automatically everything that you write in the main function will be executed. Now let us create our own function. So to create our own function we shall follow the same thing. First, we declare or we put what we shall return. We shall return void, meaning that we shall return nothing. I then give the function the name. Let us follow the format. So, for example, I can call this function uh, maybe greet. Okay? So, this function will be greeting. Okay? Greeting function. Then, after, we put these brackets. Okay? put the brackets for that will receive arguments and then we open the curl brackets this curl bracket and we write any code that we want to be executed in this function here so here i'll put this uh, the, the the what the tab key and then say uh, the use of this function is just to greet okay so it can say good morning how are you Okay, and then put a semicolon okay that's the use of what that's the use of this function so i hope you've understood and since we've said that we shall return nothing you see you are not returning anything here okay we did not promise to return anything and you can see here we do not return anything so if we run this function what should we see good morning and how are you if we run the program we did not see anything can you see we did not see anything and you know the reason why just according to the definition we must first call this function before it executes uh, the code that is inside it otherwise if we don't 
uh, call this function it will not do what it will not display anything as you can see so let me call this function to call this function i'll simply say greet and then i put the bracket here and then put a semicolon so by doing like this it means that i have called this function did you do this you didn't do it so if i call this function like this then it will do what it will be able to 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 do what to print what is uh here so if i run this program you can see this good morning and how are you uh it has been printed one time so i can say maybe and how are you good morning and how are you so if we don't do what if we don't uh if we don't if you don't call this function it's not it's not executed so if we call it multiple times just like the way i told you if i call it like this then it means it's going to receive two times if i call it like this it's going to repeat execute three times so that's the use of function it helps us not to repeat ourselves it helps us not to repeat ourselves because you write it one time and you use it many times otherwise if we didn't have a function i would write the same code here again and again and again and again but the use of function is just write it one time and execute it any time that you want. So if I run this time, then it means that we write, uh, we, can you see, we have the word good morning and how are you three times, yet it is written one time. Can you see here? Good morning and how are you? We wrote it only one time, but it is being displayed three times. Why? Because it is inside the function and this code is executed only when we call it and we can execute it as many as we want so that's the definition of a function and that's how functions work okay let me look at the syllabus of these people okay they talked about function they define functions okay they did it okay you can see uh-huh what else declaration and uh okay yeah Okay, can come and follow along these notes uh, but uh, before I go to what I want to talk about next I want to explain something a uh, global and uh, local variables so and I'm going to create here another file and I'll save it as uh, file 6 functions and then I'll call it global and local variables okay so that's the global and local variable i'm going to remove this okay so you know what's the meant by variable something that will store what our values okay uh, if we want to store any value for reusing later, we have to store it in a what? In a variable. Now, if you want, we have two types of variable. One is called local variable. Another one is called global variable. A local variable, we define it inside a function. And that local variable, we access it or we can use it inside that particular function only. Outside that function, we cannot use that local variable. Let us create another function. Okay. I'm going to create a function. I'm going to call it foo. So I'll just simply say this function. How do you create a function? By simply saying void. And then we give it a name which is foo. And then you give it a bracket. And then curl bracket. And then we don't return in this function. I'm going to create another function. I'm, call, I'm going to call it bar. Okay. Okay, full bar. Okay. So I have these two functions. Okay. Now I'm going to explain the meaning of a local variable. I'm going to declare here an integer, or, or I'm going to declare an integer called my foo. Okay. So this integer is going to be called my foo. You know, I mean, uh, a name of variable cannot do what cannot have the space. My foo is equal to 50 okay and after declaring it here i am going to print this bar i mean this foo 
inside the main function. So if I try to print it inside the main function, I'll simply say printf, or I mean c out, and then I put my foo. Okay, so let us see what's going to be uh, printed. End line. Okay, so if you run this program, you see it's bring an error. It brings an error. Okay, why? Because this variable is inside the function it is inside a function so we cannot access it we can only access it inside this function it is a local variable so maybe you can say maybe we do not call this function let us call it first and we see if everything if something will be okay i call the function first and then after i run the program still there's what there's an error there's what an error why because it is a local variable it is a local variable uh -huh. so if i want to access this variable i can only access it inside here okay i can only access it inside here so what i like what will i do i can for example if i put this my foo inside here where this function or this this uh my foo was declared then everything will be okay why because it is in the same brackets or in the same function then it is locally accessed there so that's what we call a what a local variable a local variable is a variable that will be accessed or that you declare inside a function and you access it only inside with um, within that function okay okay so that's the meaning of what of a local variable you declare it inside the function and if you declare it inside the function you cannot access it anywhere apart from within that function that's meaning of local variable so a global variable a global variable is a function that you can access anywhere is a function that you can access anywhere in your program oh for example if i want to declare a global variable here i can say maybe uh int you see where i put it i put it outside all the function i put it outside all the function why it is a global variable let me comment here let's say this is a local variable that when you download this code you'll be able to understand and then say this is a global variable variable okay so i'll have to give it a name maybe i can say my what my bar and then is equal to uh, maybe 100 or 60 okay then i put a semicolon so it means that this one can be accessed anywhere remember we tried to access my foo inside the function the main function but it was not there okay it was not be able to be seen so let me first comment my foo and try to come to access it here again you see i access again my foo again we shall get the same error that this function has i mean my foo can't access it now let me try to access my bar since we said my bar is a global variable now let me try to access it here so i'll put here my bar so if i run this program it is executing it is executing yet my bar we did not define it inside the main function but why were we able to do what to find it we were able to find it because it is inside it is inside the what it is i mean it is outside all the function and we call it a what a global variable okay now this global variable can be changed by any function it can be changed by any function for example let me change this my bar here inside uh, my bar i'm going to call here my, my, my bar i'm going to change my bar into uh, 160 okay so inside my bar it did not declare did you declare my my bar inside bar function no but if you run it it has not one it has not changed okay it has not changed why has it not changed it's because i've not called my bar so it has called my bar my what my bar here 
Uh -huh. So what should you expect? So this my bar will make the global variable to become 160. And then after we print it in the another function, you can see it will have changed. So let us run it. Uh, call my bar. Oh, no, no, no. It's not a function. Just say bar. So if I call bar, then we can see we are getting 160. Why are we getting 160? Because we called my bar and the task of my bar, it updated this global variable. And again, when you try to access it again, it became 160 because my bar had changed it. Because my bar had changed it. Okay. So I can simply even say here and say after um, after bar function after bar function after calling the bar function and then let me put here before calling the what the bar function okay so this is before and this is after so let us see what will happen so you can see before we call the bar function it is 60 original okay and then after calling the bar function it changes you see it has a built to change that global variable to 160 and then after calling it uh, we print just the same line and we found that my bar has changed 160 so it means that anything that can access the uh public function or so not the public anything that can access the global function it can be able to do what to change it okay i hope you get the point so that's uh all about global and local variable in w3 schools i don't think they talked about them mm? they don't talk about uh the local and global variables okay so let's go and look at what at parameters okay we'll look at what at parameters or arguments okay so to do this i'm going to create again another file parameters and arguments uh -huh. So I'm going to just okay, let me just copy this one and then I'll come and save us a file. Where is the savers? Okay, file save as and then I will come and leave this one as function and change it to what to parameters and arguments. So when you'll be watching this video, you'll have ability to access uh these function i mean these files or these practice files uh from the link that i'll put in the description and in case you want to practice along you can practice them so we can uh, what are we going to talk about the arguments okay so arguments let me first delete all these others okay so what is an argument uh, first of all we saw that uh, we cannot uh, access a function that is private or the i mean a via, an integer that is local that or private okay if an integer or a variable is defined inside another function we cannot access it in another function because it is local now it's just like your secret you cannot share a secret with someone else or if someone does not know your secret so a parameter or arguments argument is what we shall pass to another function so we can in C++, we have ability to tell, hey, this is a function that I know. I can tell it my what? My secret. So if I give it a variable, then it will be able to know any, even even if, I mean, this variable was private, I mean, was a local, it will, but through parameters, it will be able to know that local variable. Okay? So assume that here, I'm having uh, integer, edge, okay and it is private you can see it's not private it is local here it may be 21 and i have name okay string and i give name maybe uh bira halima okay so the two what these are two local local variables and these are local variable stored inside the what inside the main function okay so i'm going to create another function it will return nothing 
and its task will be just to display okay so i'll give it a name i'll call it my display you can open curl bracket and okay what the task of display is just to print or to display whatever we give it okay so i'll it's going to see out or to print uh first the edge or i can say i can print something like this my my name is then i put the name okay so what the name here it is name okay but remember this name is a what is local aha uh -huh. let us try to access it there and we see what will happen uh, my name is that and i put and then i say comma i am and then i want to put the edge there so i'll come and put edge and then add and then say years old and put a new line same colon okay years old okay so let's call my display here and then we try to display okay so if we run let us run so we shall simply click here you see there's an error there is what an error yeah so when i call my display it is there is an error which error these are local variables inside the main function so we cannot access them here that's why there is what this an error now we want to tell this what my display that hey this is my name and this is my what my age just do your task of what of displaying okay so how do you do that if you don't want to make this one public so that anyone can access them we want to be giving them to just our uh, our what for example our 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 friends that we trust our trusted friends they're the ones that we want to tell our names and our age so it doesn't mean that i should make them public so that everyone can access them so i will have to tell it only to a function that i call for example my display it want to know these things that are private or that are local here so how will i do that i'll do that by simply uh receiving or getting the what the parameters uh, how will i get the parameters i'll specify here what i'm going to get so i can specify that i'm going to get a string so i'll declare inside the what inside the brackets i'm declaring inside the what the bracket so i say hey i'm going i'll need a string called name then i put a comma and uh, what an integer called age if you give me these two i'll be able to do what to accomplish your task okay so if i run this program it will run but it will not work okay it will not run why because this one expects two parameters when you call me you must give me two things the name and the age that's a rule that i do what i define here so it's that if you give me the name i'll be able to do it to print it and your age will be able to print it so that's why it's not working here so here i'll pass to it an argument okay a parameter or argument how about to it arguments so call them parameters call them arguments just the same okay so i'll pass them an argument what the first position is the name so i'll give the name remember i already have the name here and the second one i'll give the what the age and the age is there so if i run it then i'll see my name is beer comma i am 21 years old you see but let me ask you a question where these are these local variables yes is this a different function yes are they defined here no they are not defined here but they are defined inside the what the parameters so by doing that we are able to tell this guy what he should do for us okay another thing you should not memorize that it is always they should always have same name still this one can have a different name because this is just a new declaration i can put for example underscore here say put underscore so if i run this again it will do what it will not work why because this is not defined so to define it i have to put underscore because this one does not know this it knows this it does not know 
this one so i'll put here also underscore then the program will be able to proceed whereby the age will be installed in the second and the name will be stored in the first so if i run it everything is cool everything is okay so that is how we pass parameters into functions let me do just one last more example i can create a, a variable that will be performing for me multiplication so it will be for example it will return nothing and then it will just i will call it mal multiplication that i call mal and then it will be getting two integers int x and then i can call this one int y so it will get these two and its task is just to print the answer so it will just say uh see out put out and then i can say maybe x itself then i also put out and i put this x times and then i put out the value of what of y okay of y and then i put this what should be displayed on the screen is equal to and then i put what i put the the answer which is uh, x star y okay so this one will be doing for us the multiplication uh -huh, so let me call it let me call it uh let me call it how will i call it by simply let me put a new line uh, no, no 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 not here okay let me call it how will i call it by simply saying mal and then i give two integers for example i can give four and and what and three and the answer should be so let me first comment this one for a minute so if i run it uh what's the problem uh see out x and this is this a problem let me try to remove if i try to remove it uh let me see what could be the problem oh yeah so you can see we're having this the value of three times the second one here so you can see here we passed four and we put here x then it has become as four and we pass this one so the only logic we have to now do the real answer so i can declare here for example an integer called answer and this answer of course will be now the real mathematics which is x times y times y and then i can come uh, and print the what the answer there i can come and print my answer here which is answer so by doing this it means that this when i call this function i'll give it two integers and the first one will be stored here and the second bit here then i declare another local integer here that i'll use to store the answer i get the first one i get the second one i apply them and after multiplying them i store them in that integer and then i do what i print and then i'll be able to see the result that we expected okay i forgot to put this i think that's why it did not work even for the first time so if i run ah then we have what we expected exactly you can see we first passed four so the four was received here and the y was received here the three and then uh, here we did the logic which is this times this and then we started it in another integer called answer and then we we're able to do what to print them so that's what you call parameters and arguments of functions argument is something that you pass through to the function through its what through its uh through its brackets okay i hope you got that okay so that's parameters functions that that one you're done with it uh default uh, parameter uh in c plus plus it is allowed that you can put a default parameter for example i can simply say that in case someone does not give me anything let me have this one as what as zero and then this one as zero you see i just equate them to zero so if i run this program it is working very well okay so if i don't give these values 
if I don't give these values, the C++ will use the default values that I put there before. So it will be 0, 0 times 0 equal to 0. Okay? So if I pass only one, uh, this one will replace only the first. Okay? And if I pass the next one, and then this one will replace the what? The second. So it will you it means that it will use zero in case you don't what you don't specify the values. Okay? Others if you specify the values, then it will do that, that whatever you specify, it will be used to replace uh, the value that you declared there as a default value. That's what we call um default values in c++ and parameters and arguments of c++ functions i hope you understood that so that's these files you can download them to the link from the link that i'll put in the attachment uh that i'll um, that i'll put in the description of this video we have we come to multiple parameter we already look that we already look that okay we come to returning values returning values returning values okay so returning values uh let me come and save us and then i'll come here to function i'll change this one to number eight and then i'll come and put it yeah i'll put it to what we watch it to return values return values okay so i'll delete all this to keep my file clean so what do you mean by returning value so returning value is uh just how should i call it though let me see how this guy's re defined it huh there's not something that we may fail even to, re to, to explain uh, the void keyword used to previous examples indicate that the function should return nothing, okay? If you want the function to return a value, you use data type such as integers, strings, etc. instead of void, you see? And then that and the return keyword. They did not also explain it properly, but it's okay. So returning value is just like a, a promise that this function will return a certain data type so you can use an integer character float anything that you want to return a value for example i want to make a, a function that will be adding for me two values not to display them but i want just to be to perform maybe mathematical calculation maybe any logic that can take a lot a long a lot of numbers so if i want to create such a function it starts shouldn't me to display just to perform and give me the answer huh? so we don't need to do what to, to 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 print in that function for example then that function must do what must return for example i'm going to create a function that will add for me two numbers and at, after adding for me two numbers it should return for me the answer how do i create that function i simply put here what i'm going to return you first put the data type. If it is a string, then you'll have to put a what? A string. Then it means that you return a string. Or the final answer that will come from this function will be what? A string. So I'm going to put here integer. So it means that this function will return a what? An integer or a integer. Okay? So it's it's uh if it's it will if it return nothing, you just put void. You remember I've been using void, void, void okay so here i say hey i'll return integer and the name of this function is called maybe let me call it my sum okay then i open the bracket maybe this sum, my sum will take two integers as parameters or as uh, arguments i already explained these things so i put here int a and then i put here also int b okay then after having these two I want to add them together and return okay so i can put here for example int total okay the why do i create total because i want this total to get for me the answer or to keep for me the answer okay so this total the total 
will be a plus b so it will come and add these two and then i store them in total so since i promised that i'll return an integer now after getting the total i have to return the total as an integer how do you return you simply put this keyword return okay and then you put total so it means that this we receive two functions i mean two uh, variables as parameters and then it will create a what another it will create another variable and then it will add the one that it received and store them in total and then later it will turn to you the total so how do you use such a function for example i can say int uh my uh okay it my what for example my my tot is equal to zero okay so if i want to get the tot of i of two numbers i can simply say my tot is equal to then i call my sum my sum and this sum is expecting two numbers maybe i can put uh 11 and then the second one i put six so it means that you must put this equal sign it means that whatever will be added here and put in total it will be returned as an integer then what will be returned will be stored in my what my tot uh -huh. so if we come and print and then you put out the my tot then you shall expect the tot to be what to be 17 as you can see 17 yet we were having zero here so it means that this one got these two and then put 17 there so if you don't return what will happen if i comment that return so i run it did i comment return did i run it i don't i don't recompile it let me compile it again hmm automatically it is returning let me not return i have not returned how did you know let me run it again aha it is one let me comment it hmm. it logically knows uh let me say uh int let me put here another value okay let me just say this one and put another value call b okay call m and then i say m is equal to 22 i want to learn something here 17 mm. i didn't know i didn't know it's just guessing a correct answer but the, the point is you must do what you must return uh let me put here 36 Oh, it is guessing the correct answer you see it is guessing the correct answer but the point you must you have to return you have to return and whatever is returned will be uh whatever is returned will be stored inside my tot okay whatever is returned will be stored inside the heart inside my tot in fact here is what it's doing it is adding this two and then automatically return it in case i didn't return so it's so trying to be intelligent that's why it is getting for us the correct answer so that's a simple explanation of how uh returning works okay let me give only one last explanation uh i'm going to do a variable our function that will tell us the 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 the, the what the subtraction okay so it will be int my maybe sub and then it will be take like two variables int m and y and then its task uh -huh. so i'm going to show you another way how you can simply return even without uh performing or creating another extra variable so i can simply return here i return uh, here i have put int also so i'll just return uh m minus y even without creating a what a variable so what does it mean it will just add i mean to just subtract after subtracting the two then it does what 
uh, returns okay so in whatever it will be returned it will be stored in the what in the value so if i call here let me duplicate this one and comment this first one in case you want to use it again so i can call here my what my sub so it's going to subtract these two even before it equate them we directly return them that is also allowed it has no problem with it and you can see 11 minus 6 the answer is what is 5 that's how my return i mean that's how returning a variable works so we finish by looking at function overloading so function overloading what is overloading overloading is in c plus plus and then we overloading is uh, declaring function with the same names and same returning data types but with different i uh, know a function i mean uh, i repeat overloading a function is declaring a function with same name but different number of parameters is it declaring a function with same name but different number of parameters in c plus plus i mean in c programming language so far that is not allowed so that's what you call overloading that's what you call a what overloading so if i come and save uh this one function overloading so i'm just going to come and save this one as another file so in case you want to look at this one you can follow along so i'll come and make this one as what as a as nine and then i'll come and change this one to overloading okay then i save it as overloading then i'll come and delete this stuff i'll come and delete this okay so what's the meaning of over overloading okay what's the meaning of what overloading so overloading is creating a variable with i mean function is same name for example i can create a function uh called foo okay and this foo uh i can say a uh, printer i mean see out put out just say a new line and say hi i am foo with one uh, with no or with zero parameter okay uh so you mean that that's i've created that foo so i cannot declare in c plus plus in c programming you cannot declare another foo let me also try to declare here another foo okay uh, let me try to declare it twice uh-huh so I'll just come and copy this one this one's just having no parameter so if i run this program it will do what it will crash it will it will not have, it will not run why because it is this ambiguity eh? function exactly same function are being redefined so it doesn't know which one you mean it is which one is which now if i want to keep the same names and it's the with the same name then that one uh, the same name of function but in the same file that one is what you call function overloading so for example here i can receive only okay to do that we have to give different number of what different number of parameters we have to give different number of parameters for example here i can say i will receive uh int zero so by doing this one then it will be allowed why it is having same name same returning data type everything is same but the different is this one receives something in a parameter this one does not receive anything so if i run the program uh float input okay so different data type returning data type if i run right now oh why it's not running i don't know why it's not running it's not running okay i think every this one must take also something zero then I have put here maybe int uh oh yeah, yeah i see i not put the name of the variable sorry okay so i can put m so if i run it ah int okay let us run now it should work 
Hmm. What is this? Int m0. Okay, now it should work. Okay. You see, it is working. And uh, yet, they are having same name. But different numbers of what? Of parameters. So, I can put here this one. So, how will it know that I'm calling uh, fun which function? Which you see this function and this function and now how will it know that i'm calling this one or this one see they have the same name so it will know by different number of parameters now if i pass here like for example you see it called the first function two time hi i'm from function parameter one let me put here with one parameter okay so if you can see it has called this one with no parameter with no parameter why because it not pass here the parameters but if you put parameter well, like for example one parameter uh, then it will automatically call a function with one parameter so if I run this one you can see it has called the function with one parameter in this first how did it know it will intelligently know that uh, a, a function with the same name that is having one parameter is this one or a single parameter is this one so by doing that, we'll have overloaded. That's what we call function overloading. By doing that, we'll have overloaded the what? The C++ functions in the same file. So I'll not proceed there. Uh, you can download the files or these practice files on the link that I'll put in the description of this video. And uh, if you want the detailed notes, you can follow along with W3Schools. And, uh, in the next class i will come and start talking about the c object oriented programming and thank you for watching remember subscribe to my youtube channel and don't miss in the next video